Hello, internet, and welcome to. Th <laughs> I, I I can't do this bit. You read the title and saw the thumbnail. You know what you're here for. So I'm assuming you all know what lore is. But for all the illiterate fucks in the back, lore is just a story or background of whatever media you're consuming. At least that's my definition. Um, by the way, I don't script my videos, so let's hope this isn't a dumpster fire. With that being said, let's talk about Cocoa Puffs, cause this orange bird story is tragic. It's about a bird that made something that he loved, but then got obsessed with it, then died by it. This is the devastating story of Sonny the Cuckoo Bird. Sonny got done making Cocoa Puffs and had some and instantly got addicted. He realizes that he's addicted, so he tries to take his mind off it by playing crossword puzzles. Great taste makes me cuckoo. I'll just keep my mind busy with this. But he got addicted too quick. So quick that he's seeing three key words. Chocolatey, crunchy, and munchy. He saw all three words while playing the crossword puzzle. Hey, a ten letter word for tasty. Hmm, chocolatey. Seven letter word for cereal sound, crunchy, and there's munchy. And couldn't handle it no more, and started eating Cocoa Puffs. After he eats more, to take his mind off of it, he calls his best friend, Mr. Parrot. And obviously, this doesn't work. It's a fucking parrot. It's fucking slow. It's gonna copy everything you say. And it does just that. He brings up Cocoa Puffs, it mimics him, and the three key words pop up again. Chocolatey, munchy, and crunchy. To keep myself from going cuckoo for chocolatey Cocoa Puffs, I'll call my best friend. Hello, Mr. Parrot. Hello, Mr. Parrot. Munchy. 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 Crunchy. Crunchy. Stop it. Munchy, crunchy. Chocolatey. And he relapsed once again and starts eating. As you can see, munchy, crunchy, and chocolatey are his key words. If he hears any of those words, it will be followed up by the other two, and he'll instantly relapse. Remember this information is going to be very vital. After eating more, he leaves the Cocoa Puffs on the table and starts playing with an elevator to take his mind off of things. Keep me from going cuckoo for the more chocolatey taste of Cocoa Puffs. I'm going to ride up and down in this elevator all day. But at this point, he's eating too much and he starts hallucinating. But how do you know he's hallucinating? Because while he's playing with the elevator, passengers get on. And instead of seeing other birds, he sees the words munchy, crunchy, and chocolatey. And the words have legs. That's how you know he's hallucinating this. 11th floor, munchy. Munchy? 12th floor, crunchy. Crunchy! 13th floor. But regardless, after seeing all three words, he instantly goes back up to the top floor and starts eating once again. After that, he makes his way downstairs, and to take his mind off of Cocoa Puffs, he starts a yard sale. Selling everything to lamps, to shirts, anything that has Cocoa Puffs on it, he's trying to get rid of it. He's trying to do better. To sell everything that reminds me of its great chocolatey taste! He realizes there's a customer and gets excited, but that customer doesn't know what Cocoa Puffs are, so he asks, what do you call this on the shirt? And Sonny, instantly, without even thinking about it, he said, Munchy. And from there, you can guess what happened. He blows up and starts eating more Cocoa Puffs. But this time around, something strange happens. If you recall, the guy said, I'll say, what do you call this? That should lead you to believe that he doesn't know what it is at all. But the moment Sonny says, Munchy, Crunchy, and Chocolatey, the same guy who asked the question said, It's Cocoa Puffs. I know, it's a bowl of Cocoa Puffs. This leads me to believe that he isn't real, and that the crossword, elevator, and the yard sale was all within the same day. Let me explain. The crossword. It shows that the words munchy, crunchy, and chocolatey are stuck in his head. The elevator proves that he has hallucinations, and the yard sale just combines them together. That's where this guy comes in. He's not real. And that would explain why he copies Sonny right after he says munchy, crunchy, and chocolatey. Still don't believe that this guy is just a hallucination? We'll explain this. Near the end, Sonny starts freaking out and closes the garage. The guy walks up to the door and says, are you okay in there? Sonny replies, I am now on a pile of Cocoa Puffs and guess who's in there with him? When we zoom in on Sonny in the garage, we see that he's on a pile of Cocoa Puffs. But when the garage was open at the beginning, there were no big piles of Cocoa Puffs. So after he closed the garage, he imagined a big pile of Cocoa Puffs and where did the guy come out of? The pile of Cocoa Puffs. That would explain why he was outside and instantly inside like it was nothing. But why would he be all within the same day? Because everything's just adding up. The first commercial in this time and he's constantly thinking about munchy, crunchy, and chocolatey. The second commercial shows hallucinations, but not only hallucinations, it shows that the words are trying to form a body with the legs they have. And by the time he gets down to the yard sale, there's a body already formed ready to say munchy, crunchy, and chocolatey. And besides all that, the next commercial is a time skip, so it would make sense for this to be in one day. 
So we start with a time skip. Cocoa Puffs are way bigger now. Sonny has way more money now and people love Cocoa Puffs. But Sonny is still trying to find a way to stop his addiction. So what does he do? He uses the money that he's gathered from Cocoa Puffs as a brand and buys out a stage for a show he's putting on. But of course it doesn't work and he starts going crazy again. After that, instead of making his own show, he decides to go to an opera house. And it turns out that they were thinking about Cocoa Puffs, so obviously he freaks out. And this shows how big Cocoa Puffs got after the time skip. They're singing it in an opera house. And to help prove that he got rich off of Cocoa Puffs, I looked up how much that seat would cost in an opera house. It's this much. Convert that to US, it's $9,000. He's rich. After the opera house, he goes to the store and sees Cocoa Puffs again, and he says, no, not this time, and gets milk. As he's going to get the milk, he sees a different type of milk. That's kind of weird. Who made this? He made the cereal, but he didn't make this. Who did this? Regardless, he can't say anything about it. He breaks. After the milk incident, he tries to stay serious about not eating Cocoa Puffs. He puts it in a safe, but he's already having withdrawals, seeing that safe turn into a chocolate safe. This doesn't phase him, so he just tries to leave, and now the box is appearing everywhere, and everything's turning into chocolate. But at this point, he has a plan. He gets to a taxi, has to leave the taxi, and gets into a plane. The plane gets taken over by chocolate, so he jumps out, and as he's paired shooting down, he's eating Cocoa Puffs. But this is okay, this is a part of his plan, he's gliding to where he wants to go. The next commercial opens up at a mountain, and Sonny's saying he has to go to the top to talk to someone. At the top we meet Cuckoo the Wise. Sonny asks how can he escape Cocoa Puffs, and we all know how it went down. Ah, why would you want to escape it? Cocoa Puffs are munchy, they are also crunchy, they are quite chocolatey! The minutes. Cocoa Puffs is the wise choice! After the monk failed him, he came back to the city where there was a huge surprise waiting for him. Extra, extra, new chocolatey vanilla Cocoa Puffs combo cereal! When chocolatey and vanilla eat, combine, there's no escape. Again, it happened again. First the milk and now the vanilla. Who's making these? You can't say it was Sonny because once again he looks surprised about this. Nevertheless, Sonny goes crazy again and it seems like everybody's getting more and more addicted to this cereal. They're all just eating cereal out in the streets while everything's coated in vanilla and chocolate. And obviously, this is a problem. You can't just have people out in the streets eating bowls of hallucinogenic cereal. That being said, everything up to this point was just building up to Core 3. This will be the saddest and craziest part about his story. So now he's in court because everybody was drugged in the streets. And this is where we meet a very important character, Judge Gramps. At the beginning, Judge Gramps tries to tempt Sonny with a bowl of Cocoa Puffs. Sonny rejects and starts explaining the effects of Cocoa Puffs. The judge refuses to listen and starts pouring milk into the Cocoa Puffs. This makes Sonny go cuckoo once again, seeing everything as chocolate. And as he's freaking out, we go back to the judge and he says Sonny's guilty and tries to play it off as the Cocoa Puffs being too good. But why? Why is Sonny guilty? We have three witnesses from the last commercial that could testify for him. What is Sonny even getting accused for? Is it from the vanilla or is it from something else? This part is going to be very important later. The next commercial opens up with Sonny being at a restaurant, trying to eat something besides Cocoa Puffs. And guess who's there with him? To keep from going cuckoo for sh Sonny. Why is the judge there? Didn't you say he was guilty? Why are you eating dinner with him? I'm going to assume that this is some type of parole because the judge tries to calm him down immediately when he starts freaking out. Once again, it doesn't matter what happens, at the end of commercial, Sonny loses it. This next commercial is the biggest turning point. The commercial opens up with Gramps hiding Cocoa Puffs in the same house Sonny's in. Sonny finds him and just gets curious about what he's doing. And you want to know what Gramps does? He instantly says, Gramps? I'm not hiding Cocoa Puffs. Cocoa Puffs? Don't open that door then. Cause there's munchy, crunchy, chocolatey Cocoa Puffs in there. Why would he say that? At this point, he knows anything to do with Cocoa Puffs will set Sonny off, which, by the way, it does. So at this point, I know exactly who Gramps is and what he wants. And it's all thanks to the next commercial, where Sonny is talking to people in the Pentagon. Yeah, the fucking Pentagon. But how did he get to the Pentagon? Who's Gramps and what does he want? Was this even Sonny's house? Who made the milk and added the vanilla? And why were these three witnesses in a court case so important? Well, you're gonna have to wait. I'm blue balling you guys. I hope you guys didn't forget I edit everything on an iPad. This was cancerous, man. It was so laggy. And my iPad's so fucking hot, man. My hands are burning. But if you can't wait, don't worry. Right after this, I'm gonna be working on the next one because I actually like this story I'm making up. So hopefully you won't have to wait too long for it. Other than that, hope you enjoyed the video. Fuck liking, fuck subscribing, comment and ch -ch 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 chingle.